All right, welcome back to 40 Day Refresh. Today we're gonna to begin to move into the practical areas of life and specifically, we're gonna be talking about money. We're gonna be talking about your finances. Now, if you don't have the online course and the email series that go with this program, go to danielfoley.net slash 40 day refresh. The number 40 day refresh, the, the access is completely free. Enter your information, you'll get access to the online course and the email series. But let's get in to talking about our topic today, which is money and finance. Let's talk about a couple key mindset switches that we have to have. Number one, the goal of money is not accumulation. It's not to accumulate a bunch of money. The goal is cash flow to have ongoing recurring money coming in, ideally that I'm having to actively work for. There might be some ongoing maintenance, but I wanna have cash flow coming in from businesses and investments and things like this that are providing for my daily living expenses, my monthly living expenses. It's not to accumulate a bunch of money, it's to use my money to create assets that create cash flow. Because once I do that, once I get to that place, I am financially free. Most people are going on the model where I'm trying to accumulate and accumulate with one day hoping to retire. I wanna to begin to use my money now to begin to invest to create assets so that I can be free whenever I want to. That's the goal of money, number one goal. Now, what is the number one thing when it comes to money? The number one thing, the table turn. Remember we talked about the table turn is the one thing that puts you back in control, makes all the difference. When it comes to money, it is this, partnership, okay? What is the key to partnership? Trust. You look back in the back of our money in the United States, what does it say? In God we trust. Trust and partnership are the two biggest keys to financial success. The more you can collaborate and cooperate and, and partner with people and develop trust with people, the more successful you're gonna be with money. Whether that's you have a boss that trusts you because you are super diligent in your work, or you're an employee and you trust your people that you're working with, or you do business dealings with people because it's developed on a platform of trust where we're partnering and collaborating with people. The more you can partner and collaborate with people, it is the table turner for financial success. Now, typically we talk about invest, uh, finances, we talk about three kind of buckets. We wanna have money to invest, we want to have money to save, to take care of your family, to you know pay for college, to pay for weddings, to pay for uh, you know a new car, a new house, all those types of things to take care of your family, and then money to give. We want to talk about those three buckets are typically the three places that we want money to be moving towards: investing, saving for your family, and giving. So investing, creating cash flow, uh, you know, saving for your family for the future needs, looking out ahead and seeing what you need uh, financially, and then like I said, being able to help other people and contribute to other people as well. We'll talk more about these things later but let's talk about a couple fundamental practices that you need to have in place remember in anything that you want to master there's a couple fundamentals you need to have the mindsets in place and then there are a couple fundamentals that you must have in place to be successful with your finances let's talk about three of them today number one in money money on our abundant life blueprint is is number four it's right in the middle it means it's it's, it's the, the glue that holds everything together. It is right in the middle. If your money is struggling, it's, it affects every room negatively, which means that we have to play both offense and defense. We need to learn to play both offense and defense. One of the ways we play defense with money is having things like uh, your uh, insurance and estate planning, those types of things taken care of. So do you have health insurance, life insurance, all these types of things in place to protect against your downside? Now what I typically recommend when it comes to your finances, I'm not a financial planner. I've studied it a lot, but I'm not an official certified financial planner. So you know, talk to somebody that can help you in those areas, but this is just, this is what I do. We want to protect against your downside you want to use plans that have really high deductibles and very low monthly premiums why do we do it that way because I'm just trying to protect against the catastrophic level I'm not trying to have every visit to the doctor paid for completely I'm just trying to protect against the downside so we have high deductibles and low monthly premiums to free up why to free up more cash flow so that we can invest to create those assets on the other side. And we also wanna make sure that you have things like life insurance and estate planning, so wills or trusts, those types of things, that they are set up just preparing for the worst. You know, it says that a good man looks ahead, a prudent man looks ahead and takes action. You look ahead, you see these things that are needed, we need to start taking care of those things now. The next thing is, Habit number two, so number one, protect against your downside, protect against the catastrophic level. If you had to go in the hospital for a while, do you have something that can protect you against a catastrophic level of loss? These types of things, all your insurance is in place. Number two, forecast your finances. Okay, so what does this mean? Track 
and forecast your finances. So I'm actively tracking what's coming in, what's going on. I know exactly what's coming in, what's going out. I know where my bank balance is, is. And not only that, I'm not doing it in the rear where I'm looking back and seeing what happened. I'm doing it forward looking where I forecast. Here's my projected income. Here's my projected expenses. And now I can see, hey, I'm going to be ahead. I'm going to be short. Do I need to move money around? Uh, you can pray and ask God for help. Uh, you know, pray. What do I do with this money if I have extra? If I'm going to be short, all right, God, I know you have a way to meet our needs. I know you have a way to do it. Show me what I need to be doing to get this taken care of. And the other part of this, we talked about the number one key in finances is partnership and trust. You need to be forecasting your finances with the important people in your life. It might be with your spouse. I even think it's good to get your kids involved in it. It might be with your spouse or your kids. If you're in a business, it might be with your employees and your team where you're forecasting the finances together because that way everybody is on the same page. If you're forecasting ahead, you see, hey, money's going to be tight and then your spouse goes out and spends a whole blows a whole bunch of money that might cause an argument there or if you know you need the checks deposited in the bank in your business and your employees don't know that that it's tight right now they need to know that a lot of people will worry well I don't want them to worry and to freak out my experience has been you're better to create this transparent environment of trust and to share with it and everybody can share it together and be on the same page. It creates some unity in the marriage, in the business, whatever it be, any, whatever partnership you may have, but forecast and track your finances diligently and do it together with the important people in your life is number two. Number three, I want you to set up, we have to start working on building this cash flow and the savings for your family. I want you to set up a separate savings account if you don't already have one, and we need to get into the habit of consistently setting money aside so that we're not spending everything we make. I know this is basic advice, but here's what I want you to do. If you're not doing it already, I want you to start with either $1 or 1%. Every time you get paid, move $1 or 1% over. Start small and gradually work on building that up over time. I might, you know, ideally want to get to at least 10%. If not more, we can continue to build up. The biggest key is we start small and we build our momentum. Remember our principles, start small, build momentum over time. We need to start setting aside money that we can begin to invest, we can begin to save, we can begin to use to contribute to other people at some point. We need to start setting that money aside and you got to get it out of your main checking account before you spend it. So if you're in the habit of spending everything you make, let's start moving a penny, a dollar, one percent. Start moving something. I don't care what the amount is. Start smaller than you think you need to. Start with a penny. I don't care. And build it over time as you go. This is a habit that you have to get implemented into your life if you want to be successful with your finances. Tomorrow, we're going to start to be talking about what do I do with that money? As that money starts to build up, we're going to talk about what do we actually do with that money in that account.